Ava Chin teaches at the College of Staten Island. She is the author of Eating Wildly, first prize winner of the 2015 MFA Fisher Book Awards. Thank you. I'm going to read you a poem about language. When we learn the language our grandmother spoke, it was to weave fabric from past to future. Not economics to compete in the job market, not practicalities because that's what everyone was going to be speaking. We learn the antiquated language of dialects gone awry, kitchen table talk, chatter in a box. Language of white-haired ladies, wizened fingertips. Language of peasants' talk. Restaurant clutter made clean by swilling tea grinds on the table. On the table. On the table, you put your feelings in a box and said they were whole. Wholly mine like a moth-eaten sweater, I bury under layers of clothing, which even in the strongest winter, I know I'll never wear. Wear it on your heart, on your sleeve, in your smile, on your face. I kiss you with my grandmother's language, but still you speak to me a slow smile, a warm breeze before it lifts to the hills and is gone. On the picket line, we circle, breathe. We make track marks in the snow, and I learn more and more of her language of protest. Boycott is boycott. Ditsi is support, as in Ditsi Gongyan, support the workers. My Chinese is a hodgepodge of ch Marxist ideology, <laughs> peppered with worker rhythms and rants, peppered with intonations like, where is the bathroom? Mistaking the intonation for take this with whiteness, mistaking the intonation for chicken with eat and explanation. Explanation. You gave me more excuses than I asked for, so I shut the door on explanations while the snow piled up in the hallways. If I could breathe her in and out of me, would I be able to sew the most intricate garment with the lightest thread? And these phrases I now stumble on, smooth like scuffed silk, binding us winter, summer, fall, intergenerationally. Will they be able to save our stories from the folds of history, traveling this way and back, halfway around the world? The world. When I asked for the world, you gave me a marble, small and hard, jiggling in my pocket, ready to be flung through Beijing and back, capable of rolling across the floor. On the floor, you pinned me like a spider on a lens. Each word, every protest was a reason for another bruise, so I packed up my mouth with old cloth and newspaper and promised that day to swallow them whole, whole. I buried her bones in a hole while my boots turned the snow into sludge. And though I spoke the words that should revive her, even that day only her language spoke to me of snow. Snow like your heart in the corners of your smile. You kissed me in Beijing. I lost you in New York. Like my language, like her kindness. Gestures of revolution and love.